Last time we talked about how you can tell more ethical zoos. This time we are talking about characteristics of unethical zoos. My name is Dr. Stephanie Shetler, AKA the Fancy Scientist, and my channel is all about empowering scientists and inspiring you to conserve the natural world. One of the first things you wanna look for, and the most obvious thing, is the cages themselves. Do they look like a cage, is there visible bars and wires? More ethical zoos are trying to get rid of that and create enclosures that look more like the animal's habitat in the wild. So more unethical zoos will have um, very little habitat structure to the enclosure. It may even be just a cage with a cement floor. These enclosures tend to be smaller, and you also wanna look at the animal's behavior too. A lot of animals in captivity will have stereotypic behavior. So this might mean um, like head bobbing in elephants, they'll like bob their head up and down repeatedly. A lot of animals pace. And this can even happen at good zoos too. What good zoos will do is put out enrichment, um, so different activities or scents or something that stimulates the animal's interest to get them to do more natural behaviors. At unethical zoos, you will see no signs of enrichment. And watch my last video to, to see an example of enrichment. In unethical zoos, you are going to have a different perspective of the animals. They tend to make the animals appear more cuddly, more human like um, for example in the Tiger King series you saw at the Myrtle Beach Safari chimpanzees were dressed up like humans and and some of the people dressed up their monkeys and little kids clothes um, with the big cats they'll be holding them um, touching them a lot almost like you would your dog or cat but these are not like domesticated animals they are wild animals and in ethical zoos they want to create an atmosphere where it looks like you are watching the animal in its wild habitat. Unethical zoos, they don't care about that at all. It's more about the human entertainment factor and people think for some weird reason that chimpanzees look cute dressed up like humans or it's funny. Um, there's going to be more of a, of a dominating role over the animals. As you saw in Tiger King, there was a couple of instances where they really like manhandled the tigers. In unethical zoos, um, you're also gonna be encouraged to um, touch the animals a lot. Um, so in Tiger King, you definitely saw that they had cub petting, which is a great, which is the main way that they make money. But also um, they brought out cheetahs on leashes. At one point, I think, I can't remember what it was. It was a, a smaller cat, maybe a serval or, or an ocelot or a clouded leopard. Um, and they were dragging it by its front feet. At more ethical zoos, they are, are not gonna do this because um, being with the public like that, it's not the animal's choice. The animal is forced to do it. Whereas in an ethical zoo, although they try to make the enclosure so you can see the animal, the animal doesn't always have to make itself really visible um, to the public. So it has the opportunity to go away. If you are participating in a cub petting activity or an activity where it's really hands-on with animals, the animal cannot escape. I remember in one scene, they had a cheetah that had a leash in its front and its back and then two carriers. Like that cheetah, it's forced to being touched. It has no escape. The biggest way that you can tell an unethical zoo is the presence of babies all the time. If you hear about babies being born at an ethical zoo, it is a big deal. It makes the news a lot of times because it's not that common. But at unethical zoos, they are purposely breeding these animals like the big cats so that you can touch them, so that you can pet baby tigers. I mean, who doesn't want to pet a baby tiger? They are so adorable. Everyone is innately drawn to their cuteness and would love to touch one. But you have to know better. You have to know that once that tiger grows up, it where is it going to go? You can't just breed an endless supply of tigers and not have enclosures to house them. So they get sold to roadside zoos, canned hunts, or they get dumped at sanctuaries. 
So if a zoo constantly advertises babies, if they have billboards that say that they have babies, this means that they are breeding their tigers or other animals like a puppy mill, constantly breeding them so that they can have babies just to make money. This, these cubs are not contributing to conservation. And you can watch one of my other zoo videos about um, how zoos contribute to conservation. They are only breeding them for money purposes. These animals can never be released to the wild. Another big sign of an unethical zoo is when animals have to do tricks. Um, so you don't want to support anything where the animals have to do like circus-like performances. These are going to be tricks that animals don't normally do in the wild. Like for elephants, a lot of times they have them lift up their front hind legs, they have them pose, things like that. The only time where it's really okay, as I explained in my last video, is that trainers do have to to train the animals um, to do little things to help them with medical purposes. So they might train an elephant to like hold its ear out so they can take a blood sample. But these tricks aren't fun or snazzy. They are just for medical purposes only. Unethical zoos have little or no educational value. It's all about human entertainment. I am doing some more videos on the facilities in the Netflix series. And um, I visited them, and their websites are completely different from more ethical zoos' websites. There's little information about the animals. There's, in there's actually incorrect information about the animals, which I'm going to debunk. And um, I have not been to their facilities, but it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of educational information presented at their facilities, from what I've gathered by looking at pictures on TripAdvisor and things like that. Unethical zoos tend to have private ownership, and this is because the people are using the animals, they're exploiting them purely to make money. This is why you see the animals doing tricks, cub petting, because those are ways to make a lot of money. Um, for Myrtle Beach Safari, their packages cost hundreds of dollars, I think it was $500, to get your picture taken with a cub and touch the cubs and everything. So these generate a lot of income for individuals, but it's at the expense of the animals. Unethical zoos will have no research taking place. Zoos should really be bragging about the research because they are under pressure from the public to be better. So they want to they want to show to the public how important they are for conservation, how they care about their animals. And zoos will research um, programs in, on animals in the wild, the fun research programs. They will also um, research their animals in captivity too. So a lot of ethical zoos will make sure, like I said, that those animals don't have stereotypical behavior and they will do studies. They will research the animals before, they will implement an enrichment, and then they will study the animals afterward to see if the enrichment reduced their stereotypical behavior. You, you want to look at the staff. Um, this might be a lot harder to do. You might have to do some internet research, but um, in Tiger King, they were pretty open about it. Um, Joe took people just right off the street, people with drug problems, um, um, people who were homeless. And though I commend Joe on giving people these opportunities, and I think it's really important we need to provide employment opportunities for people who have been incarcerated and support rehabilitation programs. That being said, I don't think it's a good idea to put unexperienced people in a cage with a tiger. You really want to get people who have trained for this. And at, unethical, and at ethical zoos, um, it's actually pretty competitive to be a keeper. And you will have to um, not only have degrees, but um, you'll have to have lots of years of experience, especially to be head keeper, and especially for more charismatic animals um, like tigers. And then finally, zoos should really have a permanent vet or an associated vet. I worked at, not a zoo, but at the Museum of Natural Sciences in North Carolina, and um, we had a full-time vet, and that's a, a full-time vet team, actually, and although it's a museum, there are a lot of live animals, a lot of snakes, fish, insects, and um, we had a full vet staff to care for the animals, and it was an AZA-accredited institution. I hope these tips help you determine if a zoo is worth visiting or not because 
we really want to only support zoos that have the highest care of animals. If you think I missed anything, please leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear your feedback. And um, if you wanna see the next video, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. I'm gonna go into depth on the facilities in Tiger King. So the Greater Winniewood Zoo, uh, Big Cat Rescue, and Myrtle Beach Safari. So you'll hear my analyses of this. Please share this video because it's so important that we increase the animal welfare standards of exotic animals in captivity. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.